Hi again then guys and welcome to already the final review from the 1.41 update. Of course not too long if the rumours do turn out to be correct and those leaks that I discussed yesterday on the channel before we see 1.42 drop. Probably not with any new vehicles but we'll wait and see. But as far as this particular update goes it's already as I said the last car. The Honda S800. Now of course from a spec point of view, from a performance point of view, it is the slowest vehicle of the five, but at the same time, in a similar way to the Toyota Sports 800, a number of the K cars, and just some of the other classics in general, that's not to say that it doesn't have a ton of potential. Now, of course, the nearest natural rival for this car was last month's Toyota Sports 800. It's a perfect rival. The engine capacity, the age of the car, the size, the category, but it's interesting when you feel just how different these two cars are in practice because as far as the handling goes I think I might actually give the edge to the Toyota over this vehicle it's lighter and it's incredible through corners now this car is also very very good but it's surprisingly heavy for what it is it weighs 720 kilo stock which is quite a lot more than you'd assume based on how dinky looking the car is now of course you've got as the name suggests that close to 800 cc engine it's technically a 791 cc which is still pretty big for a car of its age and size you're looking at 68 horsepower which is a lot more than the toyota 48 pound feet of torque of course i already mentioned the weight and when you combine that power and weight you're looking at a pretty decent actually 94 horsepower per ton so for a price tag of 58,000 credits which all things considered is quite a lot for a car that has far less power than most other classics and certainly other sports cars in the game what does this car actually offer well interestingly it differs a lot from that toyota sports 800 because that toyota feels really in its prime when you're on the tarmac going through tight corners at really high speeds with this honda i've heard a number of people actually say that you've had issues with the car just flipping over on curbs now personally i haven't flipped the car once in all of the time that i've driven it so far but that doesn't necessarily surprise me that that is an issue because again it is small it is relatively wide in comparison to its length it's not overly heavy it's heavy for what it is but it's not heavy in a general sense at 720 kilos and the ride height in particular certainly doesn't help in that regard because it is very high the toyota sports 800 is pretty low for a classic especially when you drop the ride height of course this one even if you drop it it's still 130 millimeters off the ground which is quite a lot for a car like this now in that rally build that i did i jacked up the suspension even more to 180 millimeters and even then going over rally jumps and taking corners 80 90 miles an hour on the dirt it still didn't flip so i'm not sure why it is doing that for some people not for others maybe because as i mentioned that hasn't been an issue at all for me but in terms of what you can actually use the honda s800 for it's actually not quite as good at what you'd expect it to be good at which is m100 it's small it's light it's more powerful than the toyota you would assume safely that upgrading it it's going to be probably close ish to the limits of m100 especially when the starting power is much higher than the toyota and a number of other k cars are just on par with this so sure why not have it as a peak n100 sports car but Unfortunately, it doesn't quite get there because the peak power is around 120, which doesn't sound like a massive difference to the 146-ish, which is the limits of N100, but with such a tiny amount of power that these cars have anyway, that is a huge difference. Having 20 horsepower between this and something like a, a Daihatsu Copen or a Honda S660, which of course is this car's spiritual successor really, it does make a massive difference, especially when a lot of them weigh a similar amount, some of them are even lighter. So what I would actually recommend using caution with when it comes to this car is where you choose to race it, because it has a ton of potential when used correctly, but if you use it under the wrong circumstances, you will know about it real fast. Now in this race, for instance, you can see I destroy the AI easily, but at the same time, you can pretty much always destroy the AI easily, even on professional difficulty. So in terms of lap time, that is a much more telling way, especially here at Dragon Trail, because I do so much of my tuning here, which is why I do the tuning, so that you guys know how these cars will compare, kind of like what Top Gear does with their laps. So when you look at those times, it's not so much that it's slow, 
it's just slower than a lot of the rest of the pack. And unfortunately, it means that as good and as zippy a car as it is through corners, and it does feel fantastic, it's just not quick enough on the straights. And that's a classic problem for N100s. They tend to either be really good in N100 for that straight line performance and maybe not quite as good through corners, and more often than not, it's the other way around, where they are really, really good through corners and just don't have that straight line power, top end power in particular. And when you're up against each other, that's not so bad, because if you're all bad in a straight line, then it's essentially like a one-make race to some degree. But unfortunately for the cars like this, there are some that do have good straight line performance, like that Honda S660 and a number of others. Even something like the classic Mini, if I recall correctly, can comfortably lap Dragon Trail quicker than this can. So even among small classics, with a similar amount of power to begin with, in fact I believe the Mini had even less power, like 63 or so, it just can't compete in that regard. So, that brings me to when I would recommend using it, and that is why I did that tune yesterday. It's not an obvious choice of rally car, but that's why I wanted to try it, because sometimes vehicles that are not obvious turn out to be surprisingly good. And that, I am very pleased to say, is exactly where I would recommend, strongly in fact, using this car. Especially with the kind of tuning that I did for it yesterday, which is really high, really soft. You can allow the car to just, essentially, just float through corners which typically would be a bad idea if you're looking for the best possible lap times because having that wallowy weight flowing from side to side and swaying around it would waste too much time but the thing that you've got to remember is of course that would be in a normal car something that weighs in excess of a ton sometimes even two tons like a raptor or a muscle car this is not that kind of vehicle, it's not that big, it doesn't have that kind of inertia and centrifugal force due to the weight through corners. So you can throw this thing through corners even with soft suspension and it, it just gets on with it. It goes through the corner like a monster. Again, you could see that in the actual driving portion of that tune yesterday. It's so good on the dirt. It doesn't matter that it has rear wheel drive because usually I don't like rear wheel drive rally cars that much because you can't get all the power down that well. But that's the thing, just like the classic Mini, which of course was front wheel drive, it doesn't really matter that it can't get all of the power down because it doesn't have a huge amount of power to get down. So there's not that much excess wheel spin. The fact that it doesn't weigh that much means that all of that power has a really easy job of getting the car moving. It's not like you've got 120 horsepower pulling along a 1500 kilo car at the end of the day. So you can just go through corners with incredible average speeds and on the dirt, I kid you not, it feels a hundred times better than it does on the tarmac. And it already feels great on the tarmac, it's just not competitive enough. On the dirt though, it feels so good. And as a perfect example, if you for instance took an N400, even stock Ford Raptor, you know, 2.7 tons or whatever it is, 411 horsepower I believe, you put that truck around Dragon Trail and then put that up against this car fully tuned, to its peak, about 120 horsepower and 600 and whatever kilos, it doesn't stand a chance. The Raptor's going to destroy it. And yet, that very same Raptor was only two seconds quicker in that rally video yesterday than the lap time that this one could do. Now, two seconds quicker, of course, would still mean that the Ford would win, but my point is, you would never be able to be that close on a tarmac track with this car compared to that car, but on the dirt, it is that close. So if it can do that against an N400 car, imagine what it could do against an N300 or an N200 or even something that's got more power but that just can't get it down. You know, like some big seven or 800 horsepower rear wheel drive car. That is where this car comes into its own. That is where its best use is. So if you do own the S800, Maybe you want to use it more, get more use out of it, make it a more competitive machine. I would urge you to try it off-road because that is where this car really comes into its own in, funnily enough, a way that harkens back really to that classic Mini because as soon as you drive this and feel its advantages through corners on the dirt, it immediately gives you an appreciation of why stuff like the old Monte Carlo Mini did so well. It feels exactly like that. You don't need a huge amount of power, you just need small, lightweight proportions, and fantastic average speed through corners. And this checks all of those boxes. So if you want to check out an interesting choice of off-roader, or just a nice little collector's classic, then check out the S800. However, be very, very careful about using it on tracks. 
because on the tarmac you really notice that lack of straight line power very very quickly unfortunately but that's it for this pick overall of course i will see you guys next time and for now as always thanks for watching